Hi all, thanks for tuning in to the second installment of Hydrogen's Tech Talks. Um, today I've got a great chat lined up with Laura People, who is the People Transformation Lead over at Oboe Energy. Um, Laura's a big advocate supporting mental health and does a lot of work in this space. So um, she runs a great podcast as well, which you can tune into on Spotify called Attention in People, um, which I highly recommend you check out and we'll pop a link below so you can have a look at that. So today we're going to be talking um, around the topic of mental health um, in the workplace. Um, following Mental Health Awareness Week, which took place over this month, I've been listening to um, a lot of the conversations and together with Laura, we're going to talk about three points which we think are truly important. So I'll pass it over to you, Laura. Please give us a quick introduction to yourself um, and your involvement with mental health. Yeah, hi Zane, so nice to be here um, and I think you introduced me pretty well but I'll expand a little bit. So yeah, hi everyone, my name is Laura um, and from a career perspective I have worked in the HR space in lots of different roles across the last nine years or so. So, um, so from a professional point of view, mental health and wellbeing has always been of interest to me but then on a personal level as well I've had periods of lower and better mental health so definitely it's kind of close to my heart as well um, and as you mentioned Zane um, recently started the Potential in People podcast and and season two for me is all about well-being so lots of shared interest between you and I about getting um, more people talking about this stuff. Yeah yeah brilliant brilliant so without further ado um, let's jump into it. So the first topic we're going to be talking about today is the culture of talking about mental health. So sometimes there's um, negative connotations that come along with the phrase mental health and it's really, it's the culture behind it um, that, you know, that sort of needs to be discussed. So I know Laura's got some interesting points in this, so um, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, it, it, it's so interesting, isn't it? When we think of the phrase mental health, we automatically assume negative we automatically assume poor mental health um, but we don't think the same about physical health which is just I think really fascinating because and and I mental health is really it's a spectrum and I re recently did the mental health first aiders course which I'd really recommend and and they talk about it in exactly that way that it is a spectrum all the way from really great mental health all the time to to someone that is is suffering all of the time with really poor mental health and uh, I, I was thinking just before this chat about an analogy of how we can relate that to physical health to I guess help someone understand it's kind of I suppose from a physical health point of view if you break your arm that might make your life suffer for a few months but hopefully you get better and you fully recover and you can live a, a very normal happy life thereafter um, or you might have something like I don't know, like carpal tunnel, for example, which is something that's never going to go away, is something that is always lingering in the background. It, it doesn't hugely impact most people's lives, but it but it is an annoyance. It's something that just doesn't go away and, and, and can slightly impair someone's life. And, um, and that's forever. So and mental health is kind of in the same way. You might have, um, like the breaking the arm analogy, you might have times where um, you go through periods of, of stress maybe you've got divorce lost a job whatever and you have a few months of feeling really low um, or you might have um, a mental health condition like an eating disorder for example which means it, it's something you suffer with for much longer um, but I think you're right I think the culture of talking about it um, is exactly that we need to do more to normalize that conversation so that people feel like they can open up um, and I guess the, the final point there is is that the mental, just like physical health, mental health can go up and down, not only month by month, but week, week by week, day by day, even hourly. Sometimes we can have kind of that fluctuation of mood throughout the day as well. And I think it's really important for us to normalise that being OK <laughs> and um, and so normal for, for each of us. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah definitely. It's, it's, it, again, it's something that's um, that mental health is portrayed as a weakness when when and you know it can make it more difficult to talk about um and especially like for, for, you know within the workplace for the employees uh, you know i think it's up to the leaders really of the business that, that should be able to start this conversation you know they're the ones that are concerned with uh, you know the success of the business the growth the profits everything like that um but i think mental health should, you know should also be a priority so it should be up to them to open up and, and sort of initiate that conversation right completely agree and i think they're 
there are so many things that colleagues can do to support each other. But here, at talking about leaders, I think it's so important for leaders to set the tone and be role models in this space. So and open up and be vulnerable about what they're going through and, and good and bad. Um, I think often in organisations, leaders want to be really polished and not talk about the bad times, whether that's in the workplace or whether that's in their personal lives. But I think in that vulnerability, you encourage your teams to open up and and um, and it really normalises and encourages that conversation. So something at Ovo, for example, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me sharing. Um, one of our senior directors opened up about that a few years ago, he'd had mental health challenges and, and he, that he had to adjust his work for a bit because of that. And and it was so amazing that he had the confidence to share that. And I, I do recognise that it can be tough to share these things sometimes, but if you're able to, it, it things like that really make it easier for other people to share um so even if not on that kind of wide scale to the whole company if you if you're in a leadership position um just talking about these things with um with your team members in their one-to-ones even just admitting that you've had a hard day or or that you're struggling at home or you're really stressed I think just really helps people to open up definitely definitely yeah that's some great points yeah thank you for that thank you for the points now that's just uh, that's great So the next topic we'll be talking about um, is how to support your own mental health, um, you know, within the workplace. So this is, again, it's something that can be really difficult to do. Um, you know, once you've recognised that you've got these issues, it's good to know how you can support that. So um, I know Laura's got some great examples, so it's so, so we'll over to you again. Yeah, it's, um, there are so many things here that we could talk about. Um, one thing I'd love to discuss first is, is around building your own self-awareness and um, there was a there's a great guy called Tom Forster who works within the the mental health and well-being space and um, and he talked to me about this so I'm stealing his ideas somewhat but he's got credit there but um, yeah around building your self-awareness so just checking in with yourself um, every day and thinking how do I feel today um, do I feel low um, do I know why that could be if so how long have I felt like this if I felt low for a period of, of months, do I need to do something about this? Like, if, especially if there's not an obvious reason why you might be feeling this way, for example, like losing job or having a really stressful time at work or having a stressful time in your personal life. So I think that to me, that's the most important thing. Just just having taking the time to check in with how you're feeling. I think we live such busy lives, not least with COVID and, and all the things that we're juggling in our day to day. Right. Um, so checking in with yourself, I think, is, is one thing that's really important um and just to build on that a little bit so recognizing that um when you're feeling low it could actually even be work itself so it might be that for example you aren't feeling motivated because you're not really loving the work that you're doing at the moment and that can make you feel low and that's okay but just checking in and th just trying to understand where those feelings might be coming from i think is a really great first step yeah, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. And a great way to, um, I mean, my opinion is to support your mental health is to talk to friends or managers. Obviously, if we're speaking about the workplace, um, you hope the people you work with, you're, you're sort of also friends with, so you should feel comfortable speaking with them. And it sort of links back to the first point we was talking about how leaders need to be more vulnerable and open up. And if you feel like you can have that conversation, it's a great way to, you know, support yourself by getting someone else to help you with it. Um, so it's, you know, in, in the workplace, again, it should be your managers, you should be having the first conversation with. I agree and I think it, it does take confidence but you often find that once you share something like that people are so willing to help whether that be kind of emotional support just being there for you or more practical support I think um, if you have the confidence to do so I think that's a really great idea um, whether it be colleagues or, or people in your personal life depending on who you've got to support you there um, and I think the other thing on this one um, just circling back to that self-awareness piece it's um, again something someone said to me once was um, we were talking about tips for mental health and and he really challenged me actually and he said tips aren't that very helpful often when it comes to mental health and I guess an example of that is um, I, I've been more open on this recently on my podcast and I've like previously suffered with eating disordered um, disordered eating habits and um, and I, it's kind of when I've talked to people in the past who don't understand it it can sometimes be unhelpful because they'll come up with tips and say, oh, just just eat more regularly or just uh, don't have 
<laughs> too much food at a certain time or don't eat after eight or whatever and it's really meaningful but actually it doesn't help because they don't they don't get it so um, I think tips can all, uh, sometimes be unhelpful so I guess where I'm going with this is that in order to help yourself in the workplace or outside of the workplace circling back to self-awareness and just trying to work out where where those low moods might be coming from but more importantly to try and lift your mood what are the things that you did before that you um, made you feel really good and trying to incorporate more of that into your life whether that be walking your dog or going to the football club with work or going to Nando's at lunch with a colleague what are the things that you know you enjoy um, and trying to get all of those back into your life because I think all of those small steps can really add up yeah yeah no, yeah, yeah definitely so um, I think that the, the first time you can actually do that and open up and and uh, uh you know actually have those conversations and do these things the first time's most difficult after that you can probably you know you probably find it a little bit easier to do so so it's just getting over getting over that first hurdle what you know once you've opened up doing it again should be a bit easier building your self-awareness and then and then supporting your own mental health should become not easier but, but a little bit more doable right yeah completely agree So the last point we're going to be talking about is how to possibly recognise and support team members and colleagues um, within the within the workplace who might be experiencing poor mental health. Um, so recognise this is from the other side. So this is recognising someone else that you work with, or or if you're a manager or a leader, recognising your employees, um, you know, potential bad mental health issues and and how to potentially support them. So it's uh, you know it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. Again, um, I think recognising someone's got poor mental health is, is half a battle. Um, during lockdown it comes to be a lot more difficult as well. Um, but you know there are there are several ways to do it and I know I know Laura's got uh, got some advice on that one. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Zane, when it's it's really difficult to recognise, especially at the moment in COVID when lots of us are working from home because you don't see people physically as much and, and you can't pick up those signals as much right so I think that's um it, it makes it more difficult and and it's difficult anyway because you you never quite know what's going on with someone and and um and often people that are suffering with poor mental health are really good at hiding it especially in the workplace because there's a fear that if they let it come into the workplace or open up about it in the workplace that they will be judged maybe they won't be in line for promotion or, or, or whatever so um, I think there is a bit of a fear and a stigma there um, which is why it's so important for us to be talking about it now um, but if you are a leader and you recognize um, something in team in your teams or if you're a colleague and you recognize some different behaviors in in, a, in one of your colleagues I think asking them privately can really help um, and it will look different for different people so for some people that might be look like overworking for some people, it might look like underworking. So it might look like they're completely withdrawing from work. They're not interested. Maybe they are less optimistic about work or, or their personal lives than usual. So it's about looking out for those signs. And, and if you feel like something might be going on, ask them. So do it in private um, and approach them with empathy. And say you could say something like, hey, I, I've noticed you are are appearing less optimistic than usual you would withdrawing from work I may be wrong but it feels like something's going on for you and I just wanted to let you know I'm here from you here for you and um, is there anything I can help with how are you feeling at the moment and I think um, this ties quite nicely in then with anyone who has watched the Roman Kemp documentary and if not I'm sure they can link it in the show notes um, it's a great documentary recently that um, I employ everyone to watch but um, something that really resonated with me in that was the how are you as a question we say it all the time at work right and the default answer is either good yeah or fine um but if you actually ask again whether it be in work or personal life but no how are you often that second question can prompt a different answer maybe it's at, uh, maybe the second answer prompts actually do you know what i'm pretty stressed with work at the moment and my, my girlfriend and i aren't getting on or whatever um so sometimes that extra question can make a really big difference um I think another thing is, particularly as a leader, but generally in teams um, when you're working with colleagues, is, is trying to make space for those well-being conversations. So let's say you're a leader and you have your one-to-ones with, with a team member. Um, trying to always have those kinds of questions embedded in, in your one-to-ones so that there is that space to do that. 
um, and, and 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 if they feel comfortable, then they can approach you about it and and open up that conversation, and you can get them the right support, whether that be referring them to um, your employee assistance program if you've got one, or specialist support like Mind, or mental health first aiders if you have them in your organisation. Um, but yeah, I think it's it just opening up that conversation, giving the time and proactively asking those conversations regularly, I think is, is really important. Um, and I think the final thing on that is that um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because COVID has been hey, really tough year for lots of us for lots of reasons. But one of the good things that has happened through COVID is, is we are starting to talk about mental health and well-being so much more. I think COVID has started to help us normalise that conversation because we've had to be really res resilient throughout this time. Um, and there are lots of documentaries, Jesse Nelson, Roman Camp, etc. And, and so um, we are in organisations are really investing into this stuff now. So in whether it be mental health first aiders, whether it be um, training around resilience, mental health, whatever it is, I think it's really important that organisations as a whole help support that initiative so that in turn leaders and teams can support each other through tough time. Yeah, I think it's really important to keep the conversations going and, uh, and uh, you're hoping to look after yourselves all the time. So, so yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks for, thanks for your thoughts on that. So that concludes our discussion today. Um, I really hope everyone watching um, enjoyed the chat. You know, mental health is an incredibly important topic um, and I hope everyone can take something away from this conversation that we've had today. So I'd like to thank Laura again for taking time to speak with me and, and again, I invite everyone to check out our podcast, which we'll link below. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some great content there and I'm sure everyone will enjoy it. So, so yeah, thank you very much for your time, Laura. It's been good speaking with you. Thanks so much for having me. No problem, no problem, and uh, and keep an eye out for the next Hydrogen Tech Talks. Take care.